Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me to speak here, and it's a really great pleasure and uh, an honor to speak to so many young people. I have to say, I'm quite nervous actually, because normally I speak with a blackboard behind me, so I at least have a door. Uh, oops, not even Stoiber, so that's dangerous. Um, um, and sorry. And I normally speak, of course, with my notes, and I have a few just in case I get nervous. Uh, so uh, bear with me. I also am a mathematician, and so I read my instructions. And the instructions were all about, uh, you know, say why you got interested in mathematics, what interests you most about it, tell a little bit about the story, how you got there. So I will try to do that. Uh, but the word uh, interest. Can you actually hear me? Uh, is that right? So, the word interest always struck me. Am I interested in mathematics? Is that the real word, uh, the right word for me? Uh, interest. I think we, the previous speakers actually avoided interest. They spoke about enthusiasm, la uh, love, uh, and inspiration, and beauty. And I think those are much more in tune with what I would uh, want to say as well. And I think one big thing I realize, preparing really for this uh, little speech, is that there's another thing. It's challenge. The challenge of mathematics, I think, was always something that I, you know, that motivated me and got me to the next step. Um, so, I don't know. I guess there's also, to be fair, I wouldn't be here if I didn't feel like I got something out of it and uh, got out of it uh, early on. I suppose I was relatively good at it with numbers. I trained uh, at a family table. My br older brothers and my parents were playing cards and I couldn't actually quite understand the game. For those of you, there's some Germans here, right? Good morning. Uh, the game was Doppelkopf which is actually quite a strange game. It's not like Skat or um, uh, you know, some of the other games where you can just sort of calculate and uh, predict things. It was very, you know, you play with another person, but you don't know yet who you play with. So it's a bit of a, a psychological game as well. Anyway, so I wasn't quite up to it at age five or six or whatever. Uh, so I counted the cards. That was my contribution. I got really uh, fast at that. I was good. And then in uh, school, I was really disappointed when they uh, told us in uh, first grade, no, you do set theory, you know, circles and color, the intersection. I said, oh, this is terrible. This is not mathematics. So I uh, asked the teacher, can I do, you know, do math with the uh, second grade, because we were in one classroom. I grew up uh, in a village on the Dutch border, so uh, it was uh, a relatively small uh, school. So she, uh, the teacher said, yeah, okay, I could do that. And that was times table, so that was fantastic. I was really good. I could beat some of the uh, second years as well, including um, the boy I had a little bit of a crush on. So, you know, I got something out of mathematics, that's what I'm saying, uh, early on, and that uh, kept me on as well. But, uh, you know, accelerating through uh, a little bit on, I went to the local uh, um, grammar school, and then, um, you know, math was always uh, one of my favorite subjects, and it was uh, fun to do things. But at, at the end of school, I thought, well, we had calculus. Wasn't this fantastic? It completely, you know, explained everything. Calculus, uh, you know, it's the differentiation, and then you have integration, which was the opposite, and it seemed to be a complete theory. What else is there to study, really, actually, really, in mathematics? That seemed to be the max, uh, you know, certainly what is there in terms of research. That was so far away, so far out of my mind. Um, so one of my teachers uh, said, why don't you go and study in America? Okay, so I did. Uh, I was accepted in a, a college called Brandeis, which had very good math teachers, but, uh, you know, I wasn't actually, you know, my idea, my interests were philosophy, um, politics, uh, I took classes in literature, all those things. Um, but I also took math because my English wasn't so good, and I thought at least math I can do, and I know I can get a degree, and so I did also take uh, math classes. But I hadn't quite realized math is actually a language, well, as we do know, math is a language in itself, and it's actually not so easy to do it in a different you know, language than you're used to, because every word means so much, and the translation you have to do there is actually much faster, but 
still, once you have that, uh, it's, uh, of course, uh, it's a universal language. Uh, uh, so uh, that helped me on there. And even when I applied to graduate school, it wasn't actually until my second year there that I decided I finally would settle on mathematics. And uh, why was that? And I think this is where the challenge comes in. I took uh, computer science classes, linguistics classes, uh, very broad still, and then uh, I suddenly realized, you know, what the computer scientist called a theorem was quite a different thing than what the mathematician called a theorem. A mathematics theorem, I had no idea how to prove it. But, you know, in computer science, this was a very new subject, actually, uh, uh, that I was studying at the time. Uh, so that was, seemed to be not as challenging intellectually. So I ended up with mathematics and then even ended up in a, uh, a subject area that as an undergraduate, I managed to fail the course, or not fail, I just didn't continue it, namely algebraic topology. So I think that's why I was thinking. It's, it's the challenge, the, the wonderful ideas, the deep ideas that uh, come, and that come also with higher mathematics that I was pushed on. And maybe, not for everybody, everybody has a different route to it, but I think for some of us, that is maybe the route in. And it doesn't have to come when you're 18. You can come to it back later. Maybe that's another message to uh, be thought about. And the reason I think it's maybe worth actually saying here, because um, it's possibly slightly at odds uh, uh, um, having this as an inspirational talk. But I think it's worth saying because there are plenty of people who are maybe not yet quite decided, especially, um, I sometimes think about women, although I guess there are plenty of women here. Uh, we often think about, you know, it has to be broader, we can't concentrate just on this one single thing. And in mathematics, you have to be concentrated on one single thing in order to really solve it, right? You really have to concentrate and ignore everything else. And sometimes life around you, you have to ignore for some time at least, right? Um, but, uh, and that's hard sometimes if you are, you know, you look at the world uh, as a whole. Um, but I think it is, Wonderfully, the challenge that comes out of it, the beauty that you can discover, is actually worth the intellectual effort. So, um, again, looking at my own uh, ideas, I really uh, said it so uh, wonderfully. Uh, when you discover something you know, between two different fields, you know one field, you know another field, and you manage to get something between them, you know, some connection, whatever it is, and you discovered it, it's absolutely exhilarating, really. It's, uh, it's wonderful. And when it happens that you know, nobody else had thought about it before, it's called research, and it's actually fantastic research as well. It's often the great breakthroughs come that way. So that's where I also see, I guess, not just the beauty, but also the um, creativity in mathematics. You know, do another calculation, it's fantastic. It's brain power, it's, it's, uh, you know, it uses a certain creativity as well, because you have to get uh, um, often uh, things from all different sorts of areas. But uh, I guess bridging these um, ideas that are uh, in mathematics and uh, finding connections, uh, f I found uh, particularly interesting. I don't know how I'm doing it in terms of time. I completely blew my plan anyway. But uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, maybe the one thing that uh, also I mean, already uh, discussed, and indeed Helga as well. You know, I always liked the fact ultimately that uh, with my mathematics I could tell a story. I liked lecturing. Um, not necessarily like this, but uh, with the blackboard <laughs> behind me. I liked lecturing and telling a story where did the problem come from? Why is this particular problem interesting? And what, what new thing can I really say about that might be interesting? It might be only a small advance in, in the subject area, but why is it interesting? And telling this story, telling it actually to your colleagues, 
and them being interested. It's a huge motivation, actually. It's wonderful. And it's connected, I think, also with uh, what we heard before as well, teaching. I come from a teacher's family, I didn't say that, but uh, you know, my father, my uncle, my grandfather, my sisters, all uh, are the, uh, teachers, so it's, it's somewhat in my blood. Um, but passing on your knowledge and explaining something to somebody else, it's fantastic, and in mathematics you see the success so, so uh, obviously, because something is completely oblivious and complicated and difficult and, you know, for somebody, and you explain it to them. And actually we know it doesn't have to be hard, it can be really easy, and seeing somebody else uh, understand that uh, is another wonderful um, experience. And I think in terms of a professional life, uh, as a mathematician you know, at university, that of course is something that uh, um, is a big motivation uh, as well. So I think I should probably stop here. So thank you very much for listening. And <laughs>